Hi, my name is Dr. Lexi Wang, and I'm a facial plastic surgeon at West End Plastic Surgery in Washington, DC. Today, on this episode of Face the Facts, we're gonna be talking about submental liposuction. So first, just to clarify, the submental area is generally defined as this area, centrally, right under the chin, but generally we just do the whole area of the lower face and neck because you're kind of already there, might as well cover the whole thing. So what is this procedure? First, the way we do it here is we generally do three types of treatments. Treatments. The first one is the vaser treatment, which basically involves using sound waves to break up the fat chunks so that way they get into smaller particles. Then we go in with the actual liposuction machine, which is a tiny straw that will suction out some of the extra fat that's already been broken up by the vaser. And then last, what we will do here is we use the Renuvion skin treatment to then selectively heat the undersurface of the skin so that way you can help get some skin tightening effect as well. Who are good candidates for this surgery? I tend to like to see younger patients or at least patients who have good skin elasticity so that way the skin will bounce back after you've done the procedure and the way you can tell that you might be a good candidate for this is if you look at the side view and you notice that you generally have kind of like a little extra pooch right here, just under the chin. Some people tend to call that their second chin when they come to see me. And that generally means that you might be a good candidate for this type of procedure. The recovery is not too bad considering all other kinds of surgeries. It is going to cause some soreness, some bruising, some swelling for a few days, up to even a week afterward. The swelling actually can be so bad that you should be prepared that you might actually even look worse after surgery initially than you do before than you did before surgery. However, it does take time for that to get better and I generally tell patients to prepare to see actual results of their surgery at the 1 month to 3 month mark but continues to improve up to 1 year after surgery. You also might experience any degrees of numbness, tingling, weird mouth or lip movements for a little while afterward. And that's just because of, again, of all the swelling. As your body eats that up, then it will get much better. I do also want to discuss what some of the limitations are for this, because as much as I love this procedure, there are unfortunately some limitations to this. The first is, again, what I talked about earlier, the skin. If you have a lot of extra skin, there is only so much that we can do to get your skin tighter without actually physically cutting out or removing skin. So if you have a lot of extra skin, this procedure is not gonna be good enough for you because the skin will continue to sag afterward and we need to actually talk about skin removing procedures such as a neck lift. Another limitation is if you actually have deep neck fat in this area. So that would be if you have things that the liposuction cannula cannot reach, in which case we would need to actually open up the area to get to that level of fat. The final thing that we cannot address is if your platysma muscle, which is the muscle right here that kind of pops out when you go like that, if that muscle has fallen from the undersurface of all the attachments below, this procedure is also not going to address that. So when you come in for an evaluation, these are some of the things that we are looking for to see if you would be a candidate who can benefit from the surgery or not. If you do have any of those other things, we might have to talk to you about something like a neck lift. So in conclusion, I'm Dr. Alexi Wang. I'm a facial plastic surgeon at West End Plastic Surgery. I love me some submental lower face and neck liposuction, but you do need to be a good candidate for this. And look forward to seeing you next time on Face the Facts.